Have you been looking for a better way to manage your dot .files? What are dot .files? Well, for those of you that are not familiar with the term, dot .files are those hidden files and directories on your system that begin with a period, with a dot. In Linux, we typically call them dot .files. They're your configuration files. So what is a good way to manage those things, to basically save those things, so if you ever have to reinstall, there may be switch distros, you have all those dot .files saved and you can just uh, pull them down from maybe your GitHub repo or GitLab repo. Well, today I discovered a really neat, a really elegant solution to this managing dot .file problem that many of us have. And the solution is git bare repositories. Let's take a look. So let's start from the very beginning because this discussion may be a little more technical in nature. For those of you that are kind of new to Linux, new to Linux, new to things like Git, uh, let's start from the beginning to explain what we're talking about here. So I've already mentioned dot .files. So here I've opened a terminal. If I do a simple ls command, the list command, it lists all files and directories in my home directory. Well, it doesn't really list all of them. It doesn't list the hidden files and directories. It doesn't list the dot .files. You have to give the ls command the a flag to list all files and directories, including those with a period at the beginning, which are the dot .files, our configuration files. These are the configuration files for things like bash the bash rc file, the dot bash rc file, or the dot vim rc file for my vim config, or your dot x resources file for managing terminal colors that use the x resources file. I have a folder called dot i3. As you can imagine, that's where the i3 configs live. So how do you manage dot files? Well, there are hundreds of ways that people have come up with for managing dot files, and none of them seem very elegant to me until just today I came across a new solution I had never uh, heard of before and I thought wow this is so much easier than what I'd been doing I have to discuss it I have to make a video on it the solution is called a git bare repository what is a git bare repository well let me clear the screen here here in my terminal and I recently created a directory in my home directory called test. So I'm going to cd over to the test directory. And let me do a ls. So this directory is empty. I'm going to make two directories inside the test directory. I'm going to make directory, if I can spell it right, uh, how about normal space and then bear space. We'll create two directories. Now ls, I have a directory called bear and a directory called normal. I'm going to cd into the normal directory. And typically what you would do to create uh, a git uh, directory here, you would do uh, a git initialize. You would git space init. And we just initialized an empty git repository in test slash normal. And then you see it says test slash normal slash dot git. So if I ls and give it the a flag. You see we have a directory inside the normal directory called dot git. It is a hidden directory. If I list all that is in that dot git folder, you see we have branches, config, description, head, hooks, info, objects, and refs. All the, the stuff that git needs you know, if this was a working tree, which it is. So this is a working git repository is what we would call this. Now let's cd space space or a dot dot and get back into the test directory. Now I'm going to cd into the bear directory. And this time I'm going to git space init space and then give it this flag dash dash bear. So we just initialized a new git repository, but this is a bear repository. See, uh, we initialized empty git repository in test slash bear but it doesn't say test slash bear slash dot git the way normal did. It didn't create that uh, dot git directory with branches, config, description, head, and all that. Let me do a ls here in the bear directory, and you will see branches, config, description, head, hooks, all in 
the bare directory. It didn't create a dot git directory and then put all that stuff in it. It's because the bare directory is not going to be a working directory. That's not what it was designed for. So it just shoves all that, that git stuff in that directory rather than putting it in a separate directory. Now, for those of you that are confused about why normal is a working directory and bare is not, uh, it's because a working directory, we're eventually going to put other files and folders in that, that normal directory. That's how you would normally use that thing and how you would use something like git. But with the bare git repository here that we created, the bare directory here, I'm not going to be like shoving dot files in this directory. That's not what this directory is for. Um, it's, it, this directory would pretty much stay empty other than the git specific files and directories that got shoved in there when I initialized it. Uh, other than that, I'm probably not ever going to add anything else to the bare directory. So that, that's the difference. So how have I been managing, managing my dot files in the past? So originally what I had was, this is actually a, a copy of my dot .files repository from GitLab, is how I had been managing this is I created a, a folder on my system, I called it dot .files, and what I would do is I would go find all the config files that I wanted to save and put on my GitLab repository and place them in the dot .files directory. So I would go and find the dot .bash rc file, for example, you know, and I would, you know, actually, uh, I would move it. <laughs> I would move the, uh, let's see, home.bashrc file over into the dot .files uh, directory here. So, it, you know, I could, if I had it in my home directory, you know, it would be something like that. And it would get rid of my bash rc file, of course, from the home directory. So later what I would have to do is I would have to go into the dot .files directory where I now have my bash rc and symlink that bash rc file back to the home directory where your Linux system expects the bash rc file to be. That's kind of complicated, right? And I would have to do that to every single dot .file and dot .directory that I placed in my dot .files folder here. Uh, that got to be hundreds of files. Hundreds of files that I had, I had to create hundreds of sim links that were pointing all over the place in the directory structure. It is hard to manage all of those sim links. Well, with git bare repositories, I don't have to sim link anything. I actually don't even have to place anything into, you know, my dot .files directory if this is actually where I wanted to initialize a new git repo uh, because I would do a git bare repository here. And let me show you how this works, how this really is quite a magical solution. So this is how this is going to work. So I have a repository on my GitLab page that I call dot .files. So I'm going to create the same repository basically here on my local machine. So I'm going to create a directory called dot .files. I actually already have it. If I ls here in my home directory, you will see dot .files. All right. The next command I want to give is I want to basically make that dot .files directory a git bare repository. So I'm going to git init space dash dash bare. Remember, that's you have to give it that flag to create a bare repository. And then, of course, the location where we're going to uh, do the repository. So in this case, we'll do, you know, a path to home and then dot .files. Right, it's the name of that directory. I hit enter, and that's all I would have to do. I've already initialized it though, so that creates uh, a git bare repository in that dot .files directory that I had already created. The next command I'm going to enter is this long and convoluted command. I'm going to share all the commands, by the way, in the, the show description, but basically this creates a bash alias. I'm going to create a bash alias for config. So anytime I type config at the shell, it is going to run the command git with this flag, dash dash git dash directory. So the git directory equals home slash dot files, my dot files folder. And then it also is going to have this flag here. The working tree is going to equal my home directory. So the git directory is the dot files directory. The working tree is my home directory. Hope that makes sense. 
and then you have these two greater than signs uh, pointing to my bash rc file basically it adds this alias to my bash rc file uh, if you wanted to you could just open up your bash rc file with nano or vim and then just add this line somewhere in that now since i added that new bash alias it will not take effect until i restart the bash shell so let me type bash and get a new shell all right then the next command I enter is config. Now that, of course, config, that's my new bash alias I created, config, config space, and then config space, dash dash local, space, status, dot show untracked files, no. What does this do? So later we're going to be running commands such as config space status and other things like that. And there are going to be a lot of untracked files on our system, files that we're not interested in tracking at all. This is so those files that we're not interested in, uh, they don't show up as untracked. Uh, so this is kind of an important line. Uh, you make, make sure you enter this. And that is all the configuration I needed to do. Again, I'm going to uh, include the three or four lines that I had to enter in the terminal here and to add that alias in the bash rc file. I'm going to include all that in the show description. But once we're done with this, now the old way I used to have to do this is I, of course, had my dot .files directory on my local machine here. I'd have to CD into it, into that directory, whatever the git repository is. In my case, it was the dot .files directory, and then I would get, play, I would place some file or some, you know, maybe my bash rc file. I'd place it in the dot .files directory, and then I would get add, you know, dot .bash rc once I'd placed it in that directory. I no longer have to do this. I don't even have to CD into the dot .files directory. I'm not placing anything in the dot .files directory because again, it's a bare repository, meaning it's basically gonna stay empty. I'm not placing anything in here. I don't even have to be in the dot .files directory. So I'm gonna CD back into home and I'm just gonna add some random file just for demonstration. So, well, how about my bash RC? So normally you would get add name a file but rem remember we created an alias to use specifically with this bare repository the alias was config rather than get so config add dot bash rc and that's all we had to do of course then we have to commit it so config rather than get commit and then dash m and then a message how about add my bash rc and it says the branch is up to date, there's nothing to commit. So the bash RC file hasn't changed since the last time I pushed it to my GitLab. So, you know, it's, it's not going to commit this, but had there been some changes, you know, it would have just added, uh, committed it straight away. And then the last thing you would of course do is config push to push it to your GitHub or GitLab or wherever you're uh, hosting your, your repository. So, I no longer have to worry about symlinks. I don't have to move anything in the dot .files directory. I can go find any file on the system. So if I, I don't know, cd into my dot .config directory where most of the config files on your system live. And say I wanted to add the config file for edex UI. So let me cd into that folder. ls. And there, is there a, yeah, settings.json. Say I wanted to add that. I would simply config add and settings.json and then config commit dash m and then I give a message adding edex UI settings. There you go. And of course you can do things like config, check out your branch is ahead of by one commit so it tells you how many uh, you're ahead of so uh, other alias things config uh, status works it says your branch is ahead <laughs> basically nothing to commit and of course the last thing to do is config push and again we never had to place anything in the dot files directory that bare repository uh, we didn't have to symlink anything this is all so easy so uh, config push, of course I have to give uh, the location to my GitLab page, of course it's DWT1, and then of course my password. 
So, you know, now I have a new dot .files <laughs> repository over on my GitLab page. So I deleted the old dot .files repository uh, with all the sim linking and stuff that I'd been doing. And I just started fresh with this git bear repository and it was so simple. I mean, I spent less than 10 minutes going around uh, and adding all of these, you know, with config, add, whatever file on my system, just every file, dot file and dot directory on my system that I knew I wanted to save, I just quickly added them, pushed them to GitLab, no sim linking, <laughs> got rid of all the sim link. The sim linking is really a headache for those that, that fool with sim links. Uh, when I first started, I thought, man, that's a really neat thing. You know, placing everything in one folder and then sim linking it all into the, the directory structure. But this is so much simpler. Um, how I came across this, by the way, is there was this article. This article over at Atlassian. Uh, the best way to store your dot .files, a bare git repository, was published a couple of years ago, February 2016, by Nicola Palucci. hope I pronounced his name correctly. Anyway. Pretty short little page describing basically what I just did on camera. I, I, of course, will link to this article as well as to the commands that I typed here on camera. Before I go, the show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leo, Rob, and Tony. Also brought to you by all those ladies and gentlemen, all those names on the screen. They are the supporters of this channel. Without them, none of this would be possible you'd like to support my work, please consider doing so. You will find me over on Patreon. Look for me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.